creating cool animations like Imangaji has never been as easy if you just know some specific effects. Today we're going to recreate this intro in this last video which will look like this and of course like always I will do this in three easy steps. First we'll import and create the elements that will make the scene. Then we're going to animate things including the little man floating around and lastly we'll add a camera movement but also the iconic low frames per second style. I'm not going to hold you guys up let's go to After Effects. First we'll have to create a new composition just click new composition then 4k 25 frames per second okay and if we look at the video we'll see a couple elements first of all we see the floating man we'll see some emojis we'll see some text animation i'll see a grid a gradient in the background and some lines now that little man is really hard to recreate in after effects so i've recreated it in photoshop it actually looks like this and of course you can download this in the description down below Back to the video, I also have the uh, emojis separately, so I can just import this in After Effects. Let's start with the background, which is a red gradient with a grid and some lines. Layer, new, solid, we'll make it blue because I like blue. When we go to effects, a gradient, oh, come on, gradient red, there we go. White, we'll set a bit on like a dark, dark red. And then maybe what we're gonna do is pull this out a bit, pull this out a bit. So it fades a bit better. Then we'll add a grid, new solid, layer, new solid, grid in the effect panels, amazing. Can make it a bit more thick, can even change the opacity here. I would say maybe 13%. And I want to make it square. And we can do that by changing the anchor points or changing the corner points, it doesn't really matter. So we have to recompose this by going to layer, pre-compose. Now it's important to move all the attributes into the new composition for this to work. So we press OK and then we create our mask. Now we press F for feather. We're going to feather it out, maybe like uh, 400. And I'm going to make it a bit bigger, maybe center it a bit. This, perfect. Now for the dotted line, I will create a new ellipse. Make sure nothing is selected. We're just gonna drag this over something like this. Then make sure the fill is set to none and the stroke is set to one single color, solid white, then maybe 10 pixels. Great. Now we want to make sure that this is dotted. We can do this by opening up the ellipse, then going to stroke and then going to plus on the dashes. Now we can uh, move the dashes up and down and we can offset it. In this case, I like it maybe around 40, looks great. And we're gonna change the opacity by pressing T for transparency, something like this. And we can duplicate this by pressing Command D or Control D on Windows and just dragging it over. Now I'm gonna import our little man. And there we go, I'm gonna scale him up. He's floating around, something like this. Then I'm going to create one text box so I can duplicate that later on, uh, which we do by using the rounded rectangle tool and just around here. Then we'll up the roundness. We're going to make sure that it has a fill on black. And then we're just going to press T again for the transparency and lower it down. Then I'm going to double click it and I'm going to open it, go to the rectangle path and we can change the size and what's important is that you do it here because if you don't then i'll show you what happens if we zoom it it's gonna scale in a different proportion you don't want that also the rounded corners are uh, messing up them so we're gonna just change the size here we can move it for example to the left looks great and then you can add the uh, emoji and we can add the text uh, killing your attention span now uh, this is all caps so we can just press all caps and the first word is in bold so I would just use black or heavy maybe and then the second part is in a thinner font so maybe book or maybe even smaller light great we're gonna select everything gonna change the size I'm gonna move it and it will look like this now for the sake of the tutorial I'm just gonna duplicate this quickly and it will look like this so what we can do now so of course we still need to change the text and the emoji, but that's what I'm gonna do later on. We're now first going to our second step, which is animating everything, including the little man, which I'm really excited about. So let's go. First, we're gonna animate one of those text blocks. And basically I'm just gonna go through it frame by frame. So this box just fades in. Then I see that the emoji fades in too. It scales up to, and it goes from blurry to sharp. And then the text, and we did this before actually, 
um, just animate him by going from the right to left with a bit of rotation letter by letter and it also fades in with blurriness so let's start with the background layer and i always like to animate in terms of uh, the right order so basically the shape will come in first so that's also the uh, first layer that i want to animate in i'm just gonna go a bit further like one half seconds we can always change this later and i'm just gonna change the opacity from zero to 34 percent in this case and then we're gonna animate everything including the layers so first the skull which scales a bit up so we set a keyframe we're gonna scale it down a bit and of course we're gonna right click the keyframe the last keyframe and easy ease then we're gonna add a blur or a Gaussian blur in this case. We're gonna put this really high, something like 50, I would say. And of course, turn off repeat edge pixels. Press the keyframe or the stopwatch to keyframe. Move in and we press to zero. We're gonna preview this. Looks a bit dull uh, because I want to... So we're gonna press U to see all the keyframes. We're gonna change this to a easy ease two. So it's a bit more smooth. Now we're gonna press the scale graph editor, move that in, that's better. And now also the opacity from zero to 100, real quick, great. I'm happy with this and I'm now gonna do the text. Now I already did a full tutorial on this. Uh, click in the top right if you haven't watched that yet. Of course, do that after seeing this video. First check out this video. I'm gonna animate the text in. We're gonna animate the rotation. We're gonna animate the opacity and we're gonna animate the blur. First the blur, we set on 10, opacity 0, and then we're going to animate the start in a bit. We're also going to rotate it a bit, and we're going to change the uh, shape to ramp up. We're going to uh, uh, keyframe the end and the offset. So make sure that everything is 0, then we're going to move it a bit further. So after, I would say, maybe move these to the front, and then we're going to move this to 100% and the offset to 100% too. And now we're going to easy ease it and move them out a bit. Something like this, slower, maybe a bit more rotation, something like this. And I'm happy with that. Now, before we go to our little man, we're going to animate the other ones. And that's really easy. We can or delete these now and duplicate our current text. Uh, or what we can do is just copy over the animator and pasting it on the other ones. Then we're gonna go to our little man and we want to move this. And there's one magical tool. I always think this is a magical tool because you can literally throw everything at it. It doesn't matter what, you can just put in an image and you can animate that. And it's the puppet pin tool. I love it. You can press the puppet pin tool and then we can add some points where we want to move it. So we're gonna pin it down. We're gonna pin it down. We're gonna pin it down. We're gonna add a pin here too and maybe a pin in the middle and then a pin here too. And now what happens if we move this? We can animate the whole, <laughs> look at him. We can make him dance. We can animate this whole uh, uh, puppet. And this is great for our animation. We can even make him do some moves like this. What is important though is that we pin down this rope too. Because if we're going to move this, it looks a bit weird if the rope is going to move with it too. And what you can always do is show the mass. And then you can see where it generated the mass. Um, in this case, we can just put a pin here. And we could even move the rope. Showing the mass also enables you to... Uh, see where it's moving. So for example, if I want to stay or keep something in the middle, I can always put a pin right in this triangle to uh, pin this down. Now the animation is uh, not that special. We're just gonna press U to see all the keyframes and we're gonna move them over. We're gonna ease ease them of course, like always, because we want things smooth as butter. Now what we can do is basically uh, move it a bit. The first animation is quite heavy because it's like coming in and after that it just moves a bit slowly i would say so first animation is quite quick and then after that it just moves a bit like this maybe move the hand a bit like this move the hand a bit like this move the legs a bit because it's like floating around and that's the whole idea so after this we're gonna move it up a bit moving his body a bit we can even select all the keyframes, change the graph editor and smooth everything out. Of course, we can also move the keyframes to make him go a bit slower. 
Now we're gonna go to the last step, which is the camera movement and of course the cool low FPS effect, which puts everything together. So first for the camera movement, it's really easy guys. What we can do is just select everything, make everything 3D, go to layer new camera, press okay. We're gonna open this transfer and we're gonna keyframe the point of interest and the position, move this over. And for the first animation, I would say it's a bit zoomed in. So we're gonna change the first position. I'm also gonna scale up the background. So we're making sure that nothing is out of frame. Now I'm gonna use the pen under cursor tool, which is this one. And we can move the camera with this option. So uh, we can just hold shift and move it down. Make sure the rope is still in place and that you see that the rope doesn't end. Then of course, select our keyframes, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And we're gonna go to the curve editor, make sure these are nice and smooth. And I would say the first animation is a bit more like this and a bit more centered. So zoomed in like this, and that works perfectly. And we're gonna set a keyframe right here, and then we'll wait a bit till this is all in in frame, we can zoom in, move the camera over like this, and it will zoom into our text animation. Now, of course, for the other text animations, this is just rinse and repeat. So I'll do that off camera, but I will show you the effect to put everything together. And that's by pre-composing everything. So go to layer, pre-compose. We're going to our effects and presets, and then we'll add a, and then we'll add a posterized time. We change the frame rate to 50 and this will give that low frames per second look. If you add some visual elements like a film grain, for example, you'll get an end result like this. I think it looks amazing and with the skills that you learned in this video, you can apply this to anything. And I do challenge you to create something else. Use the same principles but add your own creativity to it. And there's one last thing, don't forget to subscribe because in the next videos I will show you even more YouTubers and more VFX breakdowns. Not only that, also their workflow, their editing and animation. So I'll see you next time. Bye!